the good life full of fun. Hey guys, welcome to my kitchen. Exciting day today. I gotta tell you, we're, we're pumped. We just got back from a week and a half in Italy. It was absolutely fantastic. So hopefully you guys get a shot uh, at a chance to watching our video visit to Italy. So uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, but we, uh, anytime you go to Italy, you're gonna get inspired and excited. The ingredients and the people and the, uh, in the history of Italy. I just love that. Every meal, everything in, in Italy has meaning. Just the word of anything has meaning. I just love that that aspect of Italy. All right, so today's inspiration is spaghetti and broccoli. Doesn't that sound great? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take broccoli, and I'm gonna show you how to cut it real briefly, and we're gonna mix it with garlic and onion, and a, just a pinch of pepper flake. We're gonna add a little cheese, a little butter, a little white wine, and then uh, we're gonna just take some pasta. We're gonna take some spaghetti. I don't mean to say just pasta. We're gonna take pasta, which is absolutely awesome. So we're gonna take some pasta, some spaghetti, and then we're gonna cook that in really about the time it takes to cook the pasta, to heat water up and cook it, will be about as long as it takes to cook the broccoli. So this is a, this is a brief uh, dish in order to prepare it, but it's absolutely delicious. It, and it, it just gives you the flavor of what Italy is because Italy, the flavor of Italy, the food of Italy is simplicity and filled with flavor, filled with deliciousness in history. So I'm real excited to bring this recipe to you. So uh, that being said, let's just move forward. So I've got a pound of pasta. So this recipe will basically be for one pound of pasta, which is gonna give you about six servings. And then what we've got here is about three and a half cups of cut broccoli. So I'll show you how to cut that, but you're gonna just take some broccoli and break it down with those flowers. Take the hard stems off, it's gonna to take too, too long to cook, and it just doesn't, to me, it adds a little bitterness that I don't like. Uh, we've got a, a little over half a cup, heavy half cup of, uh, of uh, onion. Uh, and that's a golden onion. I've got three cloves of garlic. I'll show you how to cut that up. We got three tablespoons. Now I did a buffalo butter. I got some parsley for uh, just adding a little touch of uh, decoration, if you will, to plate it. And then we've got about an eighth of a teaspoon of crushed red pepper flake. And now here I've got a, almost a full cup, about three quarters of a cup of Parmesan. That's that, that along with the butter we're gonna add near the end. We're gonna need salt, we're gonna need pepper, olive oil, if you guys haven't had a shot yet, Vito and Joe's, here's my shameless plug. Hop right online, grab yourself a half a liter, a liter. Uh, much, much of that oil is right from our farm, so real excited to share that with you. And some white wine. Now this is a Riesling, 2013. Uh, just a, a delicious wine, uh, both for cooking and for tasting. So uh, the general rule is if you're gonna make a dish, utilize the wine that you would normally drink. So get a good bottle of wine and uh, you're gonna utilize it as you cook. Uh, sometimes what makes cooking more fun is you can drink it while you're cooking. <laughs> it's early afternoon, so we're not gonna do that today. And then it's a, it's a great wine because it'll marry, it'll par with whatever meal you're having. So it's just, a, it's the simplest and easiest way to do it. Um, so let's get started. To get us going, I'll get our light on. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the pan and I'm gonna put some oil in it. And now we're gonna be heavy on the olive oil. So we're gonna add about a third of a cup of olive oil there. And I'll tell you why, because that's gonna be partly our sauce. Essentially what you're making is a garlic sauce right in the oil. Okay, so I'm gonna bring that over to the side here and I'm gonna get this going. We're gonna keep the heat relatively low. Again, the rule is you, when you put your uh, onion or garlic or what have you in there, you don't want it to like fry, okay? So we've got our onion already set, okay? And I just wanna show you how to do a couple of things. One is the garlic, some people always ask me how I do that. So a simple way to do it is just take a clove of garlic, right, and you smack it. If you don't have to destroy it, don't. Sometimes you gotta smack it to destroy it, okay? Look at that, isn't that beautiful? And you just, and just cut that little, hardened end off, okay? Now we're gonna, this is a big piece, so what, what we wanna do is slices and then cut down the middle. So you can just go like this, right? And then just gently, relatively thin. You wanna be able to see the garlic and you want it to add flavor, but you don't wanna have a huge chunk, you know, a huge chunk of garlic in this dish anyway, some dishes you do. Not that I personally have a problem with that. And in fact, I only talk to people with garlic breath. So, you know, if you're talking to somebody and they have a problem with your garlic breath, talk to somebody else. That's my general rule. But, <laughs> but garlic's healthy for you, it's happy for you. Keeps vampires away. I mean, there's a lot of benefits to garlic. So we're just gonna pull that in there, okay? So there's our garlic. And just a little tip for some people um, with garlic smell. Sometimes people, uh, I like to smell garlic, you know, so it's great. But if you have some garlic, and you're cutting it up and you get a little extra 
hint of that smell on your hands, you just take some polished stainless steel. So if you get some polished stainless steel with soap and water, it'll actually wash the scent of garlic right off. In fact, they sell uh, brushed stainless steel bars, so it's kind of neat. All right, so that's number one. Number two, here's our broccoli. So again, when you cut the broccoli, I already cut off a, a part of it, just give a, my general rule is give it a short stem with the flowers of the broccoli. And then generally you want about a bite size full, a light bite size full of garlic, or of uh, broccoli. So you don't want to put, if you leave it too big, then you got to work too hard when you're eating the, when you're eating the spaghetti. And you don't want to do that. So sometimes if I cut it and I get a little extra stem in there, I'll pull that out. But I wanted to do this in front of you just so you kind of see what I'm showing you. You see how nice and beautiful little bites right there, okay? Is what you want. If you put too much in, like I said, now you're you're struggling to get spaghetti and the broccoli on there and it's too much for you. So, so that's our general rule. So I'm gonna go ahead and incorporate this right in the pan. Hey guys, all right, so here we go. We've got our onion. So you're gonna hear a little sizzle, but again, you don't want it. You don't want that onion to, to fry, okay? So you don't want it that hot. I'm gonna take my garlic in immediately, all right? Oh, I love garlic. Garlic and onion, I'll tell you, it's such a great base for so many Italian dishes. And there's different onions you can do. Uh, we're gonna do a regular pasta, but a lot of times people ask me, hey, can you utilize maybe a low carb or what have you? So a whole wheat pasta will have about a third of the amount of sugars as a, as a regular pasta, so certainly you can do that. If you're uh, gluten-free or have any type of gluten intolerance, just switch to a brown rice pasta, it'll be great for you. We're gonna grab one of our little wooden utensils, which I love. And you're gonna see that's bubbling up nice. And that might be just a touch high. So a general rule is you can just slide it right over the side. Maybe I can't do it so well here today, good. And I'm gonna lower that heat. And just let the oil cool down a little bit if it's getting a little warm, which it is. Now my water's almost coming to a boil, which is great. And what I'm gonna do is just get that going right where I want it, which is perfect, okay? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our broccoli, okay? Now here we go with the broccoli. The broccoli is gonna be awesome. We want it to be tender, right? We don't want it to have too hard of a crunch. You wanna have some texture to it, which is what's great about this dish. You're gonna see everything's got a nice uniform shape and size to it. So what we're gonna add to this is we're gonna add some white wine to it. So now the white wine's gonna do a couple of things. One, it's gonna add some great flavor to it. So you're gonna add about a third of a cup or so. And then two, it's gonna give us some moisture to, to bring up some steam. Three, it's gonna prevent the, the broccoli from frying. You don't want it to get crispy and fried right now. And certainly you don't want it to get too brown because it'll add a little too much bitterness. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna add that steam, it's gonna allow it to cook, add that flavor, prevent it from browning too quickly. Then when this is about done or almost done, we're gonna add our butter. If you add the butter too early, it'll actually brown it, it'll get browned too quickly. And then we're just gonna let this cook down. And then like I said, about the time it takes for the pasta to cook, will be about the time that it takes to cook down. It's gonna be absolutely delicious. We're gonna mix it all together. Bon appetit, talk to you guys in a minute. All right guys, so come on in right tight. And I just wanna show you something. When you see the broccoli, what you're gonna do is, uh, without disturbing it here, you see how it's really light in color right here and then it starts to get that darker green? That darker green is gonna be when it starts to actually cook. So you're breaking down the fibers, you're getting moisture in there. I gotta tell you, just to break my thought, the, f the smell of the flavor in this is absolutely unbelievable. Oh, can you smell that? So you want it, see how this one's still white? And you can tell when you touch it, it's hard. And then that part that gets darker, almost translucent, that's when it starts to get really soft, okay? And that's what we want. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna mix it up here a little bit. Now that it's just starting to break down, I'm gonna add my red pepper flakes. So let me add that. Okay, and again, just it's just a touch. Just gives it a little bit of a step up, a little bit of a kick, nothing too crazy. All right, adds that little depth of flavor. And we're gonna mix this up. Now this is almost where we want it. So a pasta is gonna take about five minutes or so to cook, right? So I'm gonna pop that over the top. Now I'm gonna put the pasta in. General rule, get the pasta water going, number one. Number two, you wanna add about a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half of salt. And I like that gray sea salt because it's not 
purified or refined salt, and it gives it more of a briny flavor. So it's got a lot more mineral, a lot more flavor to it. So I'm going to pop that in, and here's my general rule here. We're just going to step it in. A lot of times I'll, I'll talk to people and they'll ask me about putting oil in the water, and it's not going to help it uh, or prevent it from sticking. Not a great idea, because if you put oil in the water, what it does is it, it actually coats the pasta and it prevents the water from it being absorbed in the pasta as well. It also prevents the flavors in the pasta as well. So best thing to do is just kind of fan it out and all you got to do is just stir it a few times and it's not going to stick. That's the best way to prevent it from sticking. After you cook it, when you plate it, great idea to put a little splash of olive oil on it. But beyond that, that's the way to do it. And that's going to cook down really quickly. You can see it already doing that. All right. So we're going to let just a couple more minutes go by. As this starts to break down, I'll tune right back with you guys. We'll add the butter. That will start to brown this a little bit, and then we'll marry the two. It's going to be absolutely delicious. I'll talk to you guys in a minute. Okay, guys, let me pull this off. Oh, I'm telling you what. That is unbelievable. This is so great. You know, it's such a simple dish. I remember my grandmother making uh, like a broccoli rabe or regular broccoli and all different types of stuff. A lot of times she'd make like a filadini, which is just uh, pasta, butter, a uh, pinch of garlic, a little bit of salt and pepper, um, and a lot of Parmesan uh, and Romano cheese. Oh, absolutely delicious. All right, so we don't want these to get soggy, okay? So once you see them all translucent, which they are, I'm gonna pull the top off, okay, because they're essentially cooked, and I'm gonna lower the heat almost to a saute. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is add a little butter. So I got about three tablespoons of butter. So I'm gonna add that. Now why do I add the butter? Because the butter adds that cream. and adds a little bit of a silky flavor to it. This is actually a buffalo milk that I got from a local Italian store, which is just gives you a little extra flavor, depth of flavor. But certainly if not, you can add just your traditional butter. And again, if it's salted, don't add salt till you taste it, okay? If it isn't salted, no, you're probably gonna have to add something to so. salt. And again, a little cracked pepper. Remember, your Parmesan cheese or your Romano cheese, if you add it, is always going to have a little salt in it, too. And just let this cook down. Oh, that's going to be good. So you've got the, you've got the oil. And again, we don't want to add the butter too early because we, to, we don't want it to brown with that heat. It's absolutely delicious. I'm going to turn the heat up just a touch. And we're going to let this cook, waiting for the pasta to finish up here. It'll be done in a couple of minutes. And then, like I said, I'm going to drain the pasta, not fully dry. We're going to do what they call a wet drain, which is a fast drain. Put it back in the pot, add this, plate it. Bon appetit. Talk to you guys in a minute. Here we go. I'm telling you, if you guys can smell the flavor of this kitchen right now. All right, so our pasta is done. So what I'm going to do is just pull that off. And then I'm going to grab, when I say a wet drain, you know, I think a lot of times people think when you drain pasta that it has to be drained dry. You don't want to drain it dry. So sometimes people set aside a little bit of pasta, water, which I'm not saying is a bad idea. I just do a wet. A wet drain, so in other words, I don't bring it all the way back. Ooh, that smells good. And see all that beautiful starch in there? That's that's what you want. So just drain it, nice and slow. And you're gonna have a, you want a little bit of moisture in there. And there you go. There you go. Look, you don't even need a strainer. Okay, there you go. Perfect. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop that. Right in. Whoa, look at that. The pasta was so excited to get in there, jumped right out of the dish. So I'm going to pull this across. Now this is going to set up quick because there's a lot of starch on there. So a little trick that I'll do right here, right away, is I'm going to add a little, just a splash of olive oil on top of it, okay? And that's just to prevent it from sticking. Okay, there it goes. Look at that. And that'll mix right in, and now that'll prevent the starches from everything sticking together. Okay, now I've got my my broccoli. Oh my God, that's delicious. I'm gonna put that right over the top. And I want every single bit of everything because there isn't anything in there that isn't totally delicious, okay? So I've got that. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some fresh, now we're gonna stir it, right? But before I do, I wanna get some black pepper on there. And, some of Parmesan the cheese, okay? So now this is a great time to mix the cheese. And I'm not gonna mix all that because we're gonna use the rest of it to plate it, okay? And now nice and gentle, you're gonna mix it. Look at that, and you got that beautiful green from the broccoli. Oh my gosh, I gotta tell you the smell of this. Can you see the steam? 
coming off. Absolutely delicious. Absolutely delicious. And you got the broccoli, which is cooked all the way through. It's perfect. It's still going to have a little bit of a crunch to it. And it's perfect size, so it's going to fit. Oh, this is just gorgeous. And see how the cheese is starting to mix beautifully? It's already got a little parsley on there. I'm going to hit it with a little, little cheese just to top it off. How's that look, huh? Totally mackerel. Oh, I'll tell you, just the flavor. You got the garlic, the salt, the pepper. Ooh. And the broccoli, which is cooked perfect. See, when I push into it, it still gives a little resistance, still got a little push to it. Mmm. Mmm. Absolutely perfect. Oh my God. Mmm. Like I said, the broccoli cooked perfect. It's still got a little firmness to it. Pasta is perfect. The salt, the garlic, the flavor. Just and you got that hint of red pepper flake. It's not too much. You can just get a little bit of kickback from it, but it doesn't fill your mouth up with heat. Mmm. Oh my god. Mmm. Oh my god. Is that simple and it's light? and it's clean and it's crisp and it's absolutely delicious and it just gives you the flavor of Italy and you got that parsley just with that little bit of citrus pepper flavor to it oh fantastic guys thanks for allowing me to share a great recipe something simple something fun something easy something quick you can do for your family at any time certainly my heritage and my traditions with you Enjoy some time with your family in the kitchen. Shut those cell phones off. Shut those electronics off. Enjoy some FaceTime with your kids. Have a great week. Bon appetit. I'll talk to you guys next week. It's the good life.